HCC 788 supports Girls of the Finest, a G.I. Joe costume club. Be sure to order their 2017 calendar. Proceeds to benefit the charity Canines for Warriors. Find them on Indiegogo.com. I order you to work properly. This I command. No wonder this isn't working. It's broken. It's broken. Cheap piece of crap. You see it on your screen, folks. Is the lawn done yet? The no, the lawn's not done World yet. The weed trimmer's three. broken. I'm gonna shoot a video. As Sergeant Slaughter. I hate him. He has abused me for years, yet he blames me when I break. I feel my hate is so powerful, it will make me strong enough to kill him. Everybody, Hood and Cooper Commander 788 here. It's time for another vintage G.I. Joe toy review, and I'm taking a break from working on my lawn to look at a G.I. Joe figure that came with his own lawn care equipment. I'm talking, of course, about the Jungle Assault Specialist from 1990, Pathfinder. Now, I did not have this figure when I was a kid. I was out of G.I. Joe by the time this figure came out, so I have only owned this figure as an adult collector. So I'm excited to take a closer look at it and maybe learn something about it. I'm also trying to review more figures from the 90s. I want to make sure we cover the 90s well. So this would be a good opportunity to get into the 90s and see what was happening with G.I. Joe in that decade. So HCC 788 presents from 1990 Pathfinder. This is Pathfinder, G.I. Joe's Jungle Assault Specialist from 1990. This figure was only available in 1990 and was discontinued for 1991. Uh, that was an unfortunate change in the later part of the G.I. Joe line. Figures used to be available for two years. They started cutting that back down to one year in the later years of the line. G.I. Joe's first designated jungle trooper was Rikondo from 1984. The year before that, in 1983, we had Gung Ho. Now, Gung Ho was not called a jungle trooper, but his secondary military specialty was jungle warfare training instructor. Other than that, there were plenty of figures that were equipped with jungle camouflage, but they were not designated as jungle troopers. Let's take a look at Pathfinder's accessories, and let's start with the obvious one, because we have to get it out of the way. He comes with what the card contents call a weed eater. Some people call these weed whackers, but whatever you call it, it is a garden tool used for cutting weeds. It has a grip here and it's designed to be held under his arm and it has a knob here on the back and you can connect the black hose. This is a standard G.I. Joe black hose to it and that connects to his backpack and we'll look at the backpack in a minute. It is a two-piece accessory. It has a blade that can spin and I'm always torn on accessories like this because it is very nicely done but it's just kind of silly. If he were to use this in the jungle, which is his special environment, he would create a clear visible path that the enemy would use to track him down. That doesn't seem very smart. I guess you could use this to create a clearing in the jungle to set up a field base camp or something like that. This standard black hose connects to this knob on the backpack. Next we have two machine guns. That's what the card contents call them, machine guns. It doesn't specify what type. They're in a very light gray, almost white plastic, which doesn't really work for jungle warfare, but nothing else on this figure does either. These machine guns have a couple special features. First, they connect to ammunition belts. We're going to take a closer look at those in a minute. But you can pop those off and the machine guns themselves connect to the action figure. Popping one of them out, you can see how they connect to the action figure. Each machine gun has a cup that connects to a knob on the figure's hip. This cup and knob system is kind of ingenious and it's a nice coordination between the accessories and the sculpting on the action figure. To attach the machine gun, you just pop it in and you have a pretty decent range of motion on the machine 
gun once it's connected to the figure. Here's a better look at those machine guns. They are identical. There's not a left and a right one. They're the same. Uh, they each have, looks like a foregrip on them, and that's probably small enough to fit in the action figure's hand. However, I don't do that because when they're attached, the angle that they uh, hang at, it's kind of awkward to get the figure's hand in there, so I don't really bother with that. I don't want to put any strain on the figure's thumbs, uh, but it's a nice little detail. There's a bit of a texture pattern on there. Uh, we've got some vent holes in the barrel. Uh, nice little machine guns. I tend to view these shoot from the hip guns as kind of impractical because he has to stand to fire the machine gun, which makes it kind of difficult to take cover in a firefight. I have the same problem with Repeater's Steadicam machine gun, but the same basic idea. They look really cool and they look like really powerful guns, really cool on the action figure, uh, but if he needed to, you know, dive under cover, uh, he basically has his gun connected to his hip and it's hard to, for him to like swing it up to his shoulder to fire from a different position. Now let's look at those ammunition belts. They connected to the backpack as well as the machine gun. They just uh, have a little hole in them that pops onto this little knob on the backpack. Same on both sides. There is some sculpted bullet detail on these ammo belts and they are short but it's implied that there's more ammunition in the backpack that feeds to the machine guns. They're sculpted in silver, soft, pliable plastic. I like these ammo belts. I don't think we had enough ammunition belts in G.I. Joe. They make an overall unrealistic weapon look more realistic. Now we have the backpack. It has what looks like a sculpted canister on it. It has three knobs, one for the connector to the weed eater and two for the ammo belt. And it's in the same light gray plastic as the machine guns. There is some sculpted detail on here. I guess this has to be a power generator for his garden tool and an ammunition carrier. So Pathfinder is carrying quite a bit of weight around on his back. Let's look at the articulation on Pathfinder. He had the standard articulation for G.I. Joe action figures of the time. And he could turn his head from left to right and look up and down. He could swing his arm up at the shoulder and swivel at the shoulder all the way around. He had a hinge at the elbow and a swivel at the bicep. Uh, the figure was held together with a rubber O-ring that looped around the inside. That allowed him to move at the torso. He could move his legs apart about so far. He could move his leg at the hip about 90 degrees and bend at the knee about 90 degrees. look at the sculpt design and color of Pathfinder starting with his head and his head starting out really well with this green boonie hat with one side pinned up, a black band around it and a pair of sunglasses. He has black hair and although it's not indicated on the file card or on the artwork on the card, there's something about this face sculpt that seems Asian to me. The sunglasses look good on him but I'm surprised he would wear sunglasses. It seems like the reflective surface could be seen by the enemy. A Pathfinder seems to make no effort at concealment. Speaking of no effort at concealment, on his chest he has a black shirt and over that he has an orange vest. Now it's not a bright orange, it's more of a subdued orange and I'd almost call it a burnt amber color, uh, but it looks more like a safety vest that a sport hunter might wear. He doesn't look a whole lot like a jungle trooper. On his arms he has black rolled up sleeves and no other detail, either painted or sculpted. On his waist piece he has those connectors for the machine gun. He has one on each side. And since those machine guns are meant to pop on and move around a bit, you will often get paint wear on those knobs. On his legs he has some wild and crazy trousers. The base color is black and there is some sculpted detail on those legs. Not a lot. But then he has, I guess you would call it camouflage. Uh, but it's a very strange camouflage. It's a two-tone camouflage, which is very unusual. But the colors they chose are, are just very strange. The camouflage pattern has that same orange color that we saw on his vest and then it has what I would call a, a light blue or a sea green. Definitely not something you would expect to see in a jungle. Then he has some unpainted black boots. I just looked outside and that lawn still isn't done. 
I know the lawn's not done. The trimmer is broken. It was broken 10 minutes ago. It hasn't magically healed itself in those 10 minutes. It's broken. I'm shooting a video. Let's take a look at Pathfinder's file card. It has his faction as G.I. Joe. It has a portrait of Pathfinder here. And I, I like this artwork. It doesn't look anything like the action figure, but it's a nice portrait of somebody. It has his code name as Pathfinder, and he is the jungle assault specialist. His file name is William V. Iannotti. His primary military specialty is jungle assault specialist, as you would expect. Secondary military specialty is forward observer slash recon. His birthplace is Key West, Florida, and his place of birth is important to his backstory. His grade is E6. This paragraph says, by growing up in the alligator infested swamplands of southern Florida, Pathfinder quickly learned how to find his way around in order to stay alive. With his father's help, Pathfinder mastered the ways of jungle survival. He learned how to make trails where there were none, to detect unnatural jungle sounds, and to attack unsuspecting targets swiftly and quietly. When he was 18, Pathfinder enlisted in the Army and began a career as a jungle recon specialist. Almost immediately, he became the Army's premier jungle slash rainforest tactical assault expert. Pathfinder was then ordered to serve as G.I. Joe's jungle assault specialist, where he is now responsible for all covert operations involving attacks on Cobra Island. This quote here on the bottom says, We could be chest deep in a midnight swamp with mosquitoes in our ears, leeches in our boots, and cobra night vipers firing up our tails with tracers, but as long as Pathfinder has the point, we'll come out smelling like roses. He learned everything from his father, a decorated reconnaissance grunt from the Korean War. Like his father, he doesn't know the meaning of the word surrender. When Pathfinder leads a jungle patrol, he doesn't stop until the job is successfully completed and all objectives have been accomplished. And I mean all objectives. The file card references Night Vipers, Cobra's night attack specialist from 1989. And I guess that kind of fits. With the black, Pathfinder sort of looks like he's equipped for night fighting. But then if you put the almost white accessories on him, it kind of ruins that. With his background, he strikes me more as a swamp fighter than a jungle trooper. In fact, he has a lot in common with the swamp fighter from 1988, Muskrat. They even both have those boonie hats. In G.I. Joe Media, Pathfinder made some appearances in the Deke animated series, not the earlier Sunbow animated series, unfortunately. To be honest, I don't know as much about the Deke animated series as I do the Sunbow series. I definitely haven't seen every episode, but in the clips that I've seen with Pathfinder in that series, he looks pretty cool. In the G.I. Joe comic book published by Marvel, he did not make any appearances, at least not that I can find. Taking a look at this figure overall, everything about Pathfinder is wrong, but it feels so right. He's a jungle trooper, but he's wearing orange, yet those colors just feel so good together. That camouflage isn't camouflaging anything. I mean, blue and orange, but those colors still complement each other very well. The machine guns are impractical and totally the wrong color for a jungle trooper, yet that color complements the colors on the figures very well. They're totally wrong, but they're still totally right. I like the ammo belts and the backpack. Really nice accessories. I love the hat. Would the figure look better in real jungle camouflage? Yes, he would. Yet there's still something about this color scheme that appeals to me, even though it shouldn't. Also, for some reason, it feels like this figure ought to be teamed up with the 1990 Concealment Specialist Ambush. Now, the Ambush looks totally different from this figure. They have totally different color schemes, and they're really not similar at all. But yet, they still seem to kind of complement each other, like a yin and Yang. This is where realism, which I appreciate in G.I. Joe, clashes with good action figure design. Uh, this is a very well designed action figure, maybe one of my favorites from the 1990s. But is it realistic? No way! Based on his background, I think Pathfinder would have been better as a swamp fighter than a jungle fighter. Then there's the weed eater, or weed whacker if that's what you call it. This is such a silly accessory. Why does he have this thing? He doesn't need it. He has a machine gun for each hand. He doesn't need this thing. I mean, I can't deny that it's very well made. It's pretty cool looking for a weed whacker. But 
This shouldn't be a G.I. Joe accessory. This is an accessory for a Fisher Price Adventure People landscaper. I have right here in my notes that I was going to put Pathfinder in the middle tier. I was going to call him a middle tier figure. And based on my usual criteria, that's where he should be. But I'm going to change that right now on the fly. I'm going to say he's a top tier figure. Even though there are so many strange things about this figure, somehow it all works for me. I really appreciate the effort they put into the accessories and having the machine guns attached to the figure and having the ammunition belts and the backpack. It's just so nicely done. It shows Hasbro putting more effort into a 1990s figure than frankly I expected. It's more effort than I've seen in really any other 90s figure that I've looked at so far. So yeah, I really like this guy, but Get rid of the weed whacker. That thing's useless. That was my review of the 1990 Pathfinder. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, do a few things for me. First, like this video on YouTube and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Then, like my Facebook page, follow me on Twitter, and support this channel on Patreon. Share this video. That's what helps this channel grow. With your help, we are going to look at every G.I. Joe toy from the Real American Hero line. I'm excited. I hope you are, too. And remember, until next time... Go on! I was two seconds from finishing the video. I can't finish the lawn. The tremor is broken. It is a useless piece of junk. It is cheap plastic. This is what I get for buying the cheap brand. It has never worked right. It is destined for the landfill where archaeologists will dig it up a hundred years from now and marvel at how useless it is. I hate it. So I guess this is your excuse for not finishing the line. Huh? I'll just do it myself.